Paul Bear step forward here. bit closer as you feel comfortable doing that. Right, um, I'm going to turn it over to the passengers for the committal you service go. here. I'm going to run the sound. Hold it. <coughs> I'm using Grandma's Bible today. It sits, it was very easy to find, right beside her chair. Well, actually, my chair. <laughs> we'll clarify that. But she kept that Bible right beside the stand, right by her chair. And I, I like using her Bible to read a few verses that are important to her. These verses are from Psalms 31. And beside these verses, it says 11, 25, 14. That's the day Tom passed. And then be below that, it says my verse. In thee, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In thy righteousness, deliver me. Incline thy ear to me, rescue quickly. Be thou to me a rock of strength, a stronghold to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. For thy, thy name's sake, thou wilt lead me and guide me. Those are just a few of the many words that were so important to Grandma. In the midst of life, we are surrounded by death. With whom can we find refuge? Only with you, Lord God. Do not let us be prey of death, but grant us eternal life through your son's death and resurrection. In his strong name, we pray, amen. Seeing this earthly life of Joyce Miller come to an end, we commit her body to be buried, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, confident of the resurrection of eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Joyce. May God bless you and keep you. May the very face of God shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God's presence embrace you and give you peace. Amen. For us, this is the end. For Joyce, the beginning. Therefore, let us not grieve as those who have no hope. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, God has destined us 
not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with Christ. Therefore, encourage one another. Now may the, may the, now may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, and the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of eternal covenant, make you complete in, in everything good so that you may know God's will working among us that which is pleasing in God's sight through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory forever and ever amen a prayer that Elaine had prayed to Joyce the last several days at the hospital. The peace of the Lord Christ go with you and on this night attend you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you from every storm. May he take you home rejoicing. All the wonders he will show you May he take you home rejoicing on this night into his doors. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. You're welcome, Dustin. Well, hello, and I want to welcome all of you here. Uh, my name is Tony Tice. Uh, I serve as the lead pastor here at Sugar Grove Church, and uh, I had the privilege of being Joyce's uh, pastor for the last four years uh, since I've been here. Um, incredible lady, so it's my honor to, to be asked to be a part of this. And uh, before we share a few words, we're going to sing some songs. I believe we have sing three songs uh, that we're going to sing, so um, let's go ahead and, and sing together.
I love to tell the story. in Jesus.
begin my time uh, with you reading the uh, obituary. Joyce Miller, 82, died on Monday, August 3 at Rush Hospital in Meridian, Mississippi, uh, where she lived during 2020. She was the daughter of Peter and Lucille Laramere. She married Tom Miller on November 24, 1956. Tom preceded her in death on November 25, 2014. Joyce was born on April 26, 1938 in Goshen, Indiana. In 1962, she and Tom moved to Mississippi where they lived until they moved to Middlebury, Indiana in 1999. In 2019, she moved to Pigeon, Michigan where she lived until January 1, 2020. She was survived by daughters Elaine and husband Dwayne, Marie and husband Clifford, sons Craig and wife Shirley, and Eric and wife Rachel, along with 10 grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren. Joyce loved her work at Essenhaus, where she proudly served until she was 80. She was a master gardener and was happiest in the dirt among her flowers. She wanted her family and friends to know that she loved them. You know, obituaries are good. Uh, they give us a, a little bit of a glimpse of a person's life, um, but just a glimpse. And uh, so we wanna take some time here at a memorial service to, to honor her life, to celebrate her life. There's really a couple things as, as pastor, and I shared this with the family on our conference call. You know, there's a couple goals at a funeral. Uh, one is to obviously celebrate the life of the person uh, who has died. Uh, but it's also to lift up the name of Jesus and uh, bring glory to God and to help process grief in light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which I know for a fact was very important uh, to Joyce. Uh, we have a large church here, and one of the frustrations with a large church is you don't get to get to know everybody that attends. And uh, I would love to say that I spent hours and hours with Joyce uh, in, in conversation, but that just wouldn't be true. Um, but I did talk to her uh, from time to time. It was normally short and sweet, because uh, normally there's a lot of people that, you know, to still greet and talk to and those kind of things. And so uh, while I didn't have hours and hours, if you add up all the five minute conversations, maybe it adds up to that. But um, my memory of Joyce is, every time and i mean every time that she came up to me um it was oh because here's the thing is, as a pastor um and if you've been if are or have been a pastor you know when someone comes up to you after a sermon that can be a good thing or a bad thing you know so um but uh i, I knew every time that she would come up to me that it would be uh, a sweet gentle encouraging word and that's the only memory I have is every conversation I always left thinking, what an incredibly sweet, caring, tender, encouraging woman of God. 
And uh, and so those that's my own personal memories of her. But you know, you do learn a lot about a person in different ways. Um, one is uh, the Bible verses that are so meaningful to them. It says a lot about that person and and their faith and what they understand about God and who God is in their life. So I thought it was interesting that her wishes were for Psalm 31 to be read. Uh, and so uh, that was already done, but I wanna go back and just for a moment, look at just a couple of things in there that give a clue to how important Joyce's faith was. In Psalm 31, it says, in you, Lord, I do take refuge. And it says, your righteousness, your righteousness will deliver me. Not our, our righteousness. Joyce understood that it wasn't her works, that her works wouldn't get her into heaven. It was the work of Christ, what he did on her behalf. His death, his resurrection um, is what made her right with God. It goes on and says that uh, you are my rock, my refuge, my strong fortress. And I love the way that it ends in verse 3. You lead and you guide me. You know, it's one thing to be a fan of Jesus. It's another thing to be a true follower of Jesus. A church our size, there are a lot of fans of Jesus, nearly everyone that comes through the doors on a Sunday. But it doesn't mean that everyone's a true follower of Jesus. And with Joyce, every conversation I had, I would leave thinking, that, that's not someone who's just a fan of Jesus. That's someone who is following Jesus with her life. And what I love about the verse that she asked to be read is the way that that last verse ends. You lead me and you guide me. God led and guided her life. And ultimately, he led her to death, which ultimately means it led her back to him. And I have no doubt, as it says in Matthew 25, that Joyce heard those words when she entered into the presence of God. Well done, good and faithful servant. I want to share just a couple of words real quick from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Um, she had a couple wishes. She wanted to make sure that her family knew how much, how much she loved them. And she wanted her family to know how much God loves them. She asked that the gospel be proclaimed at her funeral. Joyce exhibited the gospel with her life. She proclaimed the gospel with her words. She prayed that people would embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so it is only fitting that she would want the gospel proclaimed at a funeral. So I'm going to share a couple of words from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting in verse 13. It says, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep. That's the Apostle Paul, this nice way of saying those who have, who have died. That you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. Paul's not saying that we don't grieve. Of course we dr grieve when someone dies. But when it's a person that knows Christ, the grief is a different kind of grief. It's a grief because you'll miss the person that is gone. But even in the grief, there is joy because you know that they are actually home now. This is a homecoming service. Did you know that? We are celebrating Joyce's homecoming to her ultimate home. Verse 14 says, For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Joyce is not in the presence of God today because she was a really nice person and she went to church every week. She's in the presence of God right now because she repented of sin and placed her faith in in the death and resurrection of Christ. She believed that Jesus died for her sins. She believed that Jesus rose from the dead to defeat the power of sin, Satan, and death. And that moment when she did that in her life, she entered into a relationship with God, which now she is fully realizing in all of its glory and perfection. Verse 15 says, For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with 
the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Jesus is going to return. Amen. And uh, I don't know about you, but when you look at the news and everything's going on, it, it, it might be soon. And we don't know that. It could be today. It could be a thousand years from now. Only God knows. But one day he will return. And the dead in Christ, whose souls are already in the presence of God. Joyce's soul is already in the presence of God. But one day when Christ returns, those that know Christ, those who have fallen asleep sleep first, those who have passed first, will receive their resurrection bodies. And those who are still living, and we might still be living when Christ returns, then they will also meet them in the air. And Paul says to encourage each other with those words. Because really, if you understand the gospel and you understand what it means to enter into relationship with God through the work of Christ, then you realize that today is actually not goodbye. Today is until I see you again. Until I see you again. Now, I don't know if you, you know, if you ever had, I mean, it's hard. I can't even imagine Joyce, like, getting in a fight with anyone. Again, I, I you knew her better, but... But, you know, um, you know, maybe you got in a fight with her once in a while. Maybe, you, you know, you know, the beautiful thing about heaven is that will never happen. <laughs> right? There's no relationship on earth that's perfect, is there? There's good relationships, but there's not perfect relationships. All right. I love my wife. I try to be a good husband, but I guarantee you I've had to say to my wife, sorry, one or two times over the years. No, one or two times this week, actually, right? Um, but that's one of the beautiful things about heaven. The next time that you see Joyce, if you're in Christ, the next time that you see Joyce, you're going to most importantly see Christ, but you'll also see Joyce. And on that day, it'll be a perfect relationship. Absolutely perfect. Because in glory, every relationship will be perfect. It's the way that it was supposed to be when God created the world before sin entered into the world. A perfect God creating a perfect place with perfect people in perfect relationship with one another. How exciting is that to know that the next time you see Joyce, that's what that will be like. And so today, sure, there's grief. The grief isn't for her. The grief is for us because we'll miss her. But there's also joy because she lived a full life and she lived it for Jesus, and she is now more alive than she's ever been in her entire life. And for that, we rejoice and celebrate. I want to pray. And just so you know, if you're here and, and you've not embraced the gospel of Jesus Christ, I would love to have a conversation with you afterwards to talk more about that. Feel free to, to see me, and we can talk more about that. But let me pray, and then we're going to open it up for testimonies. Uh, if you have a, a short memory or a short word that you'd like to say, and then I believe at the end of that we have a tribute that's going to be read as well. And then we have a closing song to end our memorial. But let me pray first. Father God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for the hope, the encouragement of knowing that, that when a person dies, it, it, it's not over. And to know that Joyce is living more than she's ever lived, and she's living in your presence. She's living in a perfect relationship with you. And so we rejoice in that. We thank you for her testimony. We thank you for how she exhibited the gospel in her life. And she showed the, the kindness, the love of Christ through her, through her deeds, through her life. And so we celebrate that as well today. In Jesus' name, amen. We have a mic up here. If a mic intimidates you, I think it's probably okay to just stand where you're at if you want to share a word. If you want to come up here and share it here so it'll be a little easier to hear, feel free to do that as well. We're going to open it up now for a few moments for people to share uh, a word or two if they'd like to. Uh, thank you so much, Tony and Dwayne, for the kind thoughts and words you've already shared. Um, it is going to be hard. Sorry. Uh, I want to go first so it would be easier. But I guess maybe I should try again. Maybe go last would be easier. Alright, so uh, let me. first of all, Eric, I would love to have been here. I'm going to read what he said so I could read it.
I am sorry that I could not be with you this morning, but health reasons, it's best Craig read my thoughts to you. My earliest memories of being with mom was when we flew in an airplane with, from Mississippi to Indiana for Grandma Lucille's funeral. The next major memory was of being with, mom, being with mom was in 1976 when I was 11. She spent six weeks with me in the hospital when I was burned. I remember her faithfully squirting grape juice in my mouth so I could not, so I would not become dehydrated. And yeah, if I was asking for an amen on that one, y'all would probably uh, believe Eric when he said that. Over the past week, I have had some time to reflect on other, what impacts mom had in my life and other and others. I'd like to share this morning some of mom's many gifts and titles she held. She was, a wife, she loved dad very much. A mother of four, she loved each of us all the same. A mother-in-law, she loved our spouses as her own children. A grandma, she cared about her grandchildren and their spouses and Jenna. Last conversation on this earth on the phone was with Peter about his first day at work. A great-grandmother to seven great-grandchildren she adored. A Sunday school teacher, a vacation Bible school teacher, a lover of animals, beaver in the bathtub. A lover of pets, Brooke and Toby. She shared the gift of hospitality. During my childhood, Mom would often put roast in the, in the oven Sunday morning before church so she could invite guests home after church. A giver. She gave each family unit at Knoxby Mennonite a quart of strawberries at the first of berry season and shared the importance of giving our first fruits. Mom, mom was like a Timex watch. She could take a licking and keep on ticking. Uh, side note here, he didn't say this, but he did tell me on the phone. He said he's got pictures of mom. Uh, she took on her phone a different time. She had bruises and this and dated where it happened and when. And uh, yeah, she, yeah, she survived all that. Uh, she was a fashion, oh, let's see, a baker. She made 20 tea rings for all the Sunshine Farm employees in Mississippi. She was a fashion model for Essen House during the style show, a gift basket maker, a mini golf course manager, a writer of Dear Children letters, a traveler, loved to travel to see family. She did not care with who or how. A photographer, she had 704 iPhones. I'm sorry, she had 704 photos in her iPhone. A trail walker. In her iPhone contact, she listed someone she met on the trail in Pigeon, Michigan that knew David. <laughs> a master gardener. A reader. She loved reading Christian books. And also my note site, she loved listening. At the end, she was constantly listening to books on her phone. A texter. In her... Uh, 100, 420 con iPhone contacts. She had each of you in attendance in her contacts. She was a master of 20 questions game. She got to know details of everyone she met. She was, in quotes, first to know. She knew important life information about us before we shared with anyone else. A grief counselor. This, <laughs> this week, I received many texts from many individuals who said, your mother helped me through this difficult time in my life. A missionary. At Pigeon River Midnight Church, Mom put her pew of individuals, had her pew of individuals she brought to church from Rose Garden. A prayer warrior. She, da she daily prayed for each of us. Bless all of you. I will remember Mom as a disciple of Christ. She loved the Lord. I truly will miss her. But I know she is worshiping the Lord 24-7, her son, Eric. Yeah, and I just want to share some of my uh, memories. Uh, I think of mom as a very sharing, giving person. Uh, she, when she would come down and visit us, uh, she, I think, was the happiest when she was doing something for us. She, I mean, it was almost work for us to come up with projects for her to help us. And But if we came up with a project to help that she was helping us, she loved that. She, I really, her heart was into giving. Yeah, serving others. What a yeah, what a beautiful example that was. And uh, when she was really frail, uh, 
I'm really grateful for the opportunity I had to be in the hospital with her at the, close to the end of her life. And I was talking about everything you talked about, Tony, that we're going to, you know, the angels are going to rejoice. There's going to be rejoicing in heaven. And you said, yes, but it's okay to grieve a little bit. It's okay to miss me a little, a little bit. I said, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. We will miss you. But yeah, she, yeah that, that, that was, she had her sense of humor right to the very end. Yeah. And uh, something else that I'll just personally miss, um, as many of you would know, she loved fire, uh, being close. To, she loved warmth. She loved being close to a fire, you know, and we have a wood stove in her home. And she, uh, yeah. You know, we live in Mississippi, so there's a lot of times where you don't really need a fire, right? <laughs> but she said, yeah, it's cold enough to be have a fire. <laughs> so, you know, we could build a fire and uh, she'd back up to it. Y'all could probably see her back up to it. Oh, oh, boy. Yeah, she enjoyed that. And, yeah, after she was gone, you know, I looked over at my wood stove. It's, you know, it's not going to be the same. It's not. But, yeah, we really miss her. And we'll continue to miss her. Uh, thank all of y'all for being here. I really do appreciate that. John lost um, Marie's son and just wanted to say a couple of things for me first um, it spoke to me how much of a servant she was to Tom through well, many hard times in Mississippi and in transitions and and I know that that will carry with me and with a lot of the family around so that that's been important to me and a legacy that I will hold on to. Uh, my my mother, uh, Marie, would like to say some things, but it'd be a little too difficult right now. So she wrote those down, and we'll get through these here. I remember the way Mom cared about people. Her hospitality was an inspiration to me. Once when, once when we were children, a touring bus showed up at our house in the middle of nowhere with the Vicksburg Quartet on board. They had taken the wrong turn, but that was no problem for mom. She pulled off a meal for all of them and we had such a great time around the table. The transition to living in Michigan was a hard time for mom. I didn't want to leave she didn't want to leave her friends in Indiana, but she was determined, determined to have a cheerful attitude. She made new friends in Michigan and soon was bringing her friends to church. And those were things that meant a lot to my mother. I'm, I'm Clifford Moss, Marie's husband. And um, I just wanted to add a little bit to John's and Marie's and what Marie had to say. Um, this week I, <clears throat> I got to go to Marie's apartment at Rose Garden and uh, <clears throat> the picture spoke to me that she still had a lot of commitment and love to her husband Tom and I hope I can be a good husband to Marie. Um, the other thing that really spoke to me was when I left out the patio because I couldn't go through the facility um, I called her best friend Phyllis and I'm saying this partly for Phyllis because Phyllis and her really uh, had a testimony and um, I was glad to be able to take them to church for Joyce when Joyce was in Mississippi I'd take Joyce's car and pick up her friends at Rose Garden and take them to Pigeon River. And um, Phyllis came out to her patio door and and we talked about Joyce's life and and uh, Phyllis is doing great. And I want just to keep that friendship with Phyllis for for Joyce. Um, 
The other thing that is really important to me, and it has been to Joyce, is um, <clears throat> Christ's life brings new life to us. In Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation he becomes. Old has gone, the new is here, and the new is here for Joyce then. Praise on, praise on that. Two blue sticks and a hat with a bow. She disappeared into the woods. Essential travel. We worried every time. An hour later, she'd return to our great wonder and relief, puffing and alive, ready to plan or nap or call someone, always ready. This time she won't return, won't tramp the woods or plant or propagate or find new recipes for us to try. This time she won't come home. Essential travel elsewhere. She was ready. Determined to recover, she knew that she would not. When I'm gone, she said, celebrate with me, but it's okay to miss me and grieve for me a little. Essential travel. No sticks. No hat. At last, we worry not a bit. But we will miss her. And we will grieve for her. Profoundly. Somebody did the last seven months. As I termed her my little grandma, and we determined that that was a term of endearment, we have so many memories. Yes, we maybe had some disagreements sometimes, <laughs> but we'll call that conversation today. But we got along and we, we loved each other and I didn't realize in seven months how much we would become a little family, the three of us. We really did. And we were planning the future. And today just came too quick. But we'll keep planning our future and grandma's a lot better off. She doesn't have to go through therapy, all what that could have meant for as weak as she got just a week ago. Yeah, Craig, you were talking about the fire at our place in her bedroom. We don't have a fireplace, but I have a little gas, I mean electric heater with the, the flame that turns on it, you know? Well, if it was barely cold outside she would have that little the, just the flame turning and not the heat on so 
I mean, it, and if it was slightly cold, she'd sure have the heat on too. Uh, some of the memories of grandma. Another memory of the many flowers that were planted this spring around our place. If somebody wants to go to a, a botanic garden, you can come to our place in the next several weeks, at least while they're still alive. Um, I can tell you exactly how deep a lot of those holes are and what layer each dirt was on the way up. And I could tell you what the bill was at our co-op. <laughs> Little grandma, she got right into the depths of my heart. And these last seven months will be something I will always remember. Those were wonderful comments and uh, really honored her life very much. So thanks for sharing those things. We're going to have a closing song. And um, by the way, that the songs were picked uh, because they were mean meaningful to Joyce. They're important songs to her. So as you kind of sing this last song, uh, obviously it's, it's about God and, and celebrating God, but also um, as you're singing it, uh, a chance to remember Joyce and how much God meant to her and how uh, how foundational he was in her life. So let's go ahead and do our closing song. In the garden.
That song said, Joyce walked and she talked with Jesus in her time on earth. And now she is walking and talking with Jesus and she's literally in his very presence. What an incredible, incredible reminder as we end our service. Thank you for being here and honoring her life, I'm celebrating her life. And uh, thank you for coming. We do have some food uh, available and uh, the back door is gonna be unlocked. You can go in there. Um, I can lead the way, kind of show where the food is at. You can eat in the student center where the food is at, or if you'd like, uh, such a nice day. If you wanna eat out in the pavilion, um, you could eat out there as well. Uh, we'll, we'll leave that up to you as uh, spend some time together um, before you head out to your various places that you, that you go. So this concludes the service. And again, thank you for being here.